what say you about the Yankees' moves? Well, I think they made a nice move. Uh, I do, and I, I just heard the um, the retease. You know, the, the one that hurts the most is giving up Waldachuk, who a lot of people like, and they think that he could be a pretty good pitcher. Uh, but you've got to give to get, and Waldachuk was not going to contribute to this team this year. The Yankees are committed to trying to win a World Series. So uh, they missed out on Castillo. Uh, it looked like the Reds wanted Volpe. They didn't want to give up Volpe for Castillo. So Montas is like a smidge below Castillo. 28 years old. You have him in control for next year. The only concern about him is that he had uh, shoulder inflammation at the beginning of July, but he's come back and made two starts and looked very, very good. Uh, also, his numbers against the Astros, Tampa Bay, and Seattle this year, he has an ERA of about 1.3. So that's good. Uh, Trevino, I think, is a shot in the dark. He's been good, uh, but he has not been great this year. He has picked up eight saves lately, though, uh, but his numbers are not what they were a couple of years ago. Maybe the Yankees see something there where they can make a reclamation project. But I think it's a good deal for the Yankees because they needed to get that number two pitcher or Severino comes back and could be number two, then he could be your number three. And we're still leaving out Nestor Cortez, who's had an all-star season. So I like what Cashman did. Uh, they gave up some, but they didn't give up Peraza. They didn't give up Bulpy. They didn't give up... Dominguez, so uh, I think it's a pretty good deal. We see how it, uh, it plays out the rest of the year. So I was talking about it with Peter before the break, Michael, uh, how you look at it. When you see, when you go out and acquire somebody that could be your game two starter, could be your second best starter, that's a significant move. But when you look at it, is that more of a something to say about the pitcher you acquired or the rotation he's entering? That he could be your number two starter? That's very esoteric question. Uh, I, I think he's a legitimate, yeah, he's a legitimate top of the rotation starter, you know, one to three on any team that he would enter. He's that good. Uh, so I think that the Yankees with the injury to Severino, you don't know if he's going to come back and you don't know if he comes back. Is he going to be the number two starter in the playoffs? Would they use him out of the, um, the bullpen? Those are all legitimate questions, but uh, Montas is the real deal. Yeah. If he's healthy and obviously they've done their due diligence on him, so I think this is this is a deal that they would probably make during the winter too, just to make their team better. And now they get him, they get him for two months, and they also have him for next year. And for a guy of his ability, uh, he won five million dollars in arbitration this year. So that's nothing. They they will they'll have to pay about two million dollars mm -hmm. for the rest of the year. That's a great pickup. Now, you, you mentioned his stats against the Astros. Here are his stats: five starts at Minute Maid in his career, three and two. 3.86 earn run average, 28 innings, 29 hits, 10 walks, 28 strikeouts, a whip of 1.39. So not great, Michael, but still, if you can get home field, it shouldn't matter. If he's your game two starter, that'll be at Yankee Stadium. And then if you if you get him later in the, the series, then you might not even have to pitch him in Houston. Not that those numbers uh, are awful also, anyway. If you want to look at negative... If, if you want to look at negatives, he doesn't have a great ERA on the road. He pitches better at home. And, you know, the ballpark in Oakland is a huge ballpark. So his home ballpark here is not gigantic at all. It, it plays a lot more fair than people give it credit for. It's not the home run haven that everybody thinks. It's like middle of the pack, and those numbers support it. But, you know, you don't have to worry about right field. He's a right-handed pitcher. So nothing, nothing is perfect. I think the guy that they really, you know, desired was Castillo. And they were, they were really, really... Um, upset when uh, they ended up trading him to Seattle. But Seattle gave up three of their top five prospects. And Seattle really needed that third pitcher as well to bolster their rotation for a postseason. But uh, you, you can say that, you know, we've got, what, a, a day and one hour to the trade deadline, and the Yankees pretty much have done what they had to do. So they can sit back, and now you can still concentrate. Do you, do you want to put together a package for Soto? Uh, where are you going to send Joey Gallo? What are you going to get back for him? So they've done their heavy lifting, and you know and people should not go to sleep on the kid they got from the Cubs, Scott Efros. Uh, they gave up a pretty good pitcher for him as well, Hayden Wesneski, who's the seventh best prospect that the Yankees have, but he would have had to be put on the 40-man roster uh, this winter, so the Yankees have too many young players, and people are going to get lost, like they lost Garrett Whitlock to the, uh, to the Red Sox. So they trade a guy that they probably weren't going to be able to protect for Efros, who's under control, I believe, till 2028. And that guy could pitch. This is somebody that they've looked at for a long time. And what they've done is they've bolstered their bullpen. Efros is a good pitcher. He get out righties and lefties. Uh, obviously, they see something in Trevino. I don't know what that means for Marinaccio. 
and Clark Schmidt. Maybe they get sent down because they both have options remaining, and uh, you know they can mix and match. And if anybody gets hurt, they can go that route as well.